fighting bad guys. He plays this ninja guy that you saw on the cover of the game. Uh, you're joined by this uh, woman named Nora. Yes, it's, it's, it's great. And uh, occasionally you meet some crazy characters like this, this pink person named Pudgy. <laughs> and uh, you fight this, uh, this thief looking guy named Lancer. And, and uh, Lancer is joined by this flying cat. You have to go around collecting these things called the dragon crystals. And huh, you know, now I think about it, I'm pretty sure the main character's name in this game is Goku. Where have I heard this before? Oh, that's why. Because in Japan, it's, tra it's a Dragon Ball game. Uh, yes, this is the very first Dragon Ball game released for the Famicom. Um, when Bandai brought it over to the U.S., they changed it because at the time, Dragon Ball was not popular in the U.S. or even really known in the U.S. It was the late 80s, and you know, it wasn't until Konami that Dragon Ball had any sort of uh, no, uh, presence in the, the U.S. Um, in the original game, Goku actually looks like Goku, has spiky hair as opposed to the bowl cut that the original, that, that the, the American version has. and. Uh, mo all the characters, they have name changes and various scenes were changed for uh, a few reasons. My personal favorite is one involving Master Roshi. The game features the early episodes of the series and for those of you familiar with the original Dragon Ball, there's a scene where Master Roshi says that he'll give Boba his Dragon Ball if he gets to see her undergarments. And there's even a whole cutscene where uh, the, those undergarments that you see, they're spinning around, and he's like, oh, man, that's, that's great. Um, they didn't stay in the American version. Instead, it looks like this. <laughs> so yes, that's supposed to be Master Roshi. He got the, the most drastic change out of all the characters. And those are supposed to be sandwiches. <laughs> so, because, yeah. No, they're, trust me, they're supposed to be sandwiches. Because in the cutscene, he specifically tells Nora, yeah. They're like, hey, I'll give you my Dragon Ball for a sandwich, because apparently in this version, Master Roshi doesn't have food in his house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, it's so bizarre. That's a fair trade. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is what the Kamehameha, Kamehameha is called in the US version, the Wind Wave. Which, which is funny because if you've seen the cinematic masterpiece that is Dragon Ball Evolution, you might remember that in that movie they described the Kamehameha as a move where you move the wind instead of like an energy blast. So it makes me wonder if someone from Fox played this game and just assumed, oh, well, clearly this is accurate to the search <laughs> Let's call it, let's, let's base it on that. Now, the funny thing about this game is that it actually was released on the NES but only in France. <laughs> because because at the time, Dragon Ball was known in France, so they kept the name. And um, it wouldn't be until 1997 that an actual Dragon Ball game would make it over to North American shores in the form of Dragon Ball GT Final Bout for the PlayStation 1. Now obviously these days, like pretty much every Dragon Ball game makes it over to the US, including a few that probably shouldn't have <coughs> Dragon Ball Connect. Uh, yeah, that one too. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's that's Dragon Ball Power. That's, that's Dragon Power for you. So so what's going on here? You see, back in the eighteen and uh, sorry, the eight and sixteen bit days of video games, you know, companies would make games based on anime properties and release them in Japan. But the problem is, is that during that time there was very few anime titles. That were that made it over here to our shores. So, you know, and and when, in order to bring these games over, you have to pay a separate license because licenses are based on a region of region basis in, in, in most cases. So, you know, why would these companies spend money on a license for a property that's not known in the country that they're releasing it in? And compared to you know more more advanced uh, games these days with 3D models and all that stuff. Changing sprites and, and you know providing localization to the small amount of text most of these games have didn't cost as much money as it would cost these days to, to localize them. So when they wanted to bring a title over, they just thought, eh, you know, we'll just change it up a little bit, try to sell it as its own original property, such as this next game. So. 
Dragon Power is actually part of a trilogy of games that Bandai brought over to the US that were based on anime properties and were changed in the US. Um, this one's a little more obvious. Um, this is Tag Team Match Muscle. And this is... Oh, oh. Uh, this is a... Uh, Muscle, for those of you who don't know, is a very, very simplistic wrestling game where you walk around, you punch, you bounce off the ropes and you fly in the air like that. That's the most interesting thing in the entire game. Occasionally, you get to do a super move, and that's it. Most people consider it pretty bad. I paid $5 for it, so I think it's okay for $5. But, you know, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out which one, what this game is based on. It is, in fact, Kaneko Man, tagged, uh, muscle tag team match. What's, what's interesting about this, and, and just Kaneko Man in general back in the, the 80s, the 90s, um, you might recognize it, you might recognize its sequel series, Ultimate Muscle More, because that anime actually made it over here. Uh, the original anime uh, didn't um, because, well, you know, it's a bit violent um, uh, for, for the 80s at least. You know, it had some uh, adult humor, so they didn't bring over the anime. But they did bring over something that was possibly way more profitable than the anime ever was, you know, at least at the time. Toys. Lots and lots of toys. Basically, they took the Kaneko Man toys and they renamed them as Muscle stood for millions of unusual small creatures lurking everywhere. There were these little, small, big wrestling figures that you can collect. Uh, most of them actually kept the same name that they, they had in Japan, and you know, you can, you can you battle with them. They're not very big. And we had like a few accessories, like a wrestling ring and, and stuff like that. And in addition to bringing over the toys, they brought over the video game. Uh, but there's one major difference. Like, for the most part, the game is similar to its Japanese counterpart, but they removed one character from the Japanese pers uh, version, and that is uh, Rockin' Jr. And they replaced it, uh, replaced him with Geronimo, uh, a different character from the series. Now, you might be wondering, why would you replace a German with a Native American? <laughs> Legit question. Um, I, have, I have a pretty good idea why you would do that. <laughs> I, I know. Look, okay, this might sound crazy, but like in the 80s, people might have thought that portraying a Nazi as a good guy might not have been a good idea in the US. I'm, look. I wonder why. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Um, other than that, there's not a terrible lot uh, to talk about with this game. Like I said, it's very similar, but. It's a, the change of character is a very funny anomaly uh, between the two versions. Uh, for those of you who are interested, 